How's it going? My name is Derek with Octane Workholding and I want to do a quick demonstration on how we program something like a lathe part. The machine is an Okuma LB3000MYW and we're using Mastercam's Milturn environment to do the programming. Job setup is basically where they want you to start. So say I've just selected Milturn, we're going to go to job setup and we'll just walk through this a little bit. You can set your maximum spindle speeds here for both your main and your sub spindle. If you were going to edit the chuck, you could say select new chuck and change everything about it, right? Basically you can skip through this if you really don't want to spend the time on it and go to setup type. We're going to be working on the left spindle and this is going to be a single piece of stock with no pick off because it's basically a one off work coordinate system it's gonna set itself up basically it's gonna default to top I'm working from the left spindle and the first thing you're doing is selecting the part geometry um, one cool feature is you can say create turn profiles and once you exit out of here it's gonna create the green lines you're seeing where my cursor is right now my stock is bar stock because we actually water jetted a piece so we got an easier start, 6.5 and 2.9 ID. Our tool plane origin, I'm just not even messing around with anything here. I'm just saying compute from the right face, the stick out. If you were actually doing a um, piece where all these numbers mattered, you're going to have to go in here and figure all this out. I'm just skipping through here because I just want to get a chuck, part chucked and off the machine as fast as possible. So right spindle we're not doing anything we're not doing a pool right so we'll just green check if this was something I was doing for production I'd be doing something like coming in here and putting small say 15 thousandths fillets on each one of these chamfers um, even a chamfer can throw a burr when you're running production and you start to get some tool wear that's a little tip for you inside of what we're doing here but here's where things get interesting when you we're going to get into the dynamic milling. So let's look at some of those tool paths. We'll turn this turn profile off and turn the model back on. And it looks like I was using end mill rough and a avoidance boundary. So yes, this is what I did here. Let's go to a right side view. And these castles basically in between here that we're trying to remove the material as efficiently as possible. I'm going to use a milling toolpath, a dynamic mill, and then pretty much the most important thing with uh, dynamic machining, anything like that, is figuring out how you're going to contain things. So I'm saying the machining regions are these three portions. This is actually a highlighted line. It's just underneath the avoidance boundary that I drew out here. So that's the area that I want to remove, and I want to tell it that the containment region are these lines. So I want the toolpath to either start somewhere in here or somewhere out here. We could tell that these are air regions as well. So there we've got our avoidance and that's pretty much it. I've created two simple things of geometry, chained everything. I could have just programmed one place like you see here and then used a mill toolpath transform to transform this at 120 degree increments. It's a little bit quicker way to do things if you're uh, getting into more complex programming. So we'll go into some of the parameters here. We've got our end mill, feed rate, just going conservative. Our setup, I'm just going to use the y-axis face on this cycle and we're just going to have it come in, lock C, and all these moves are going to be X and Y and Z basically. Go back in here to the parameters. Under cut parameters, one of the big ones is uh, obviously step over, but minimum toolpath radius. If you give it a smaller number here, the toolpath can do things a little bit more complex because it can get into tighter areas. We're not going to do anything with corner pretreatment, depth cuts, breakthrough. This is going to take everything off in one pass. So on our linking parameters, I like to keep retracts absolute so it fully clears the part. We're going to start our feed plane at another absolute coordinate, the same, 0.25. Top of stock, 0 is also absolute. And when I, switch to, when I switch to incremental, we'll be on the actual depth. 
So when you're on something like depth theory, you can select it and go to your lowest point, right? We had already done that, negative 1.19. Let's take a look at what we got here. Let's turn back off those boundary chains and see what this toolpath looks like. It looked pretty darn efficient to me. So we're gonna slow things down and we're starting inside of what would be the stock, right? Go back to the right side view, press play. And we've gone down and the first pass it's just barely touching. There, we're going in by a good amount. That should throw a nice chip. Nice, easy in and out motions. Nothing hard on the machine, the material, the tooling. So here, we've almost broken through the skin on the outside of what would be that wall. And then we'll have to come in and clean up those little triangles that are left. And with Mastercam, this is a really nice toolpath. This does this very efficiently. There we go. Coming in and cleaning that up. And then hopefully we get a full retract. Yes, we did. And we're skipping over to the next pocket. Nice efficient toolpath. This is only going to take a minute or two to run all three points. Most of the time on this part will be spent deburring. And then on the finish pass, I went and created a profile that looks like you see here. I didn't end up using these. What I actually did was I took this line and I took half my tool radius. So it's a half inch tool. I offset everything over a quarter and just put it in 2D mode so that my lines would snap and just started estimating where I thought it would need to go. And then I just mirrored the profile over and joined the lines. So what that looks like when it runs, we can maintain climb milling. So we're going to start here, come across, back up onto the face, feed down and across, and we're actually establishing these chamfers that you see right here on both points. So that's going to be a pretty slick toolpath. Watch it run. It's moving in on Z. Boom. Slow it down. Let's watch that a little bit again. It's skipping past it, coming back across, climb milling over, and we've completely cleaned that face. All right, let's turn that back off and move on. So here we're getting into the edge breaks. All I did was I used wireframe create curve on one edge, right? And I put a line on here. And then in my parameters for this, I'm using a contour toolpath I'll just show you over here mill contour parameters and then under cut parameters we're gonna do a 2T 2D chamfer with 5000 width and we're gonna do a bottom offset of 0.085 oftentimes I'll do a top offset of say 20 thousandths from the largest point of the chamfer mill and what that does is uses the largest diameter of the tool possible so on lead in, lead out, we can leave tangent enabled, and I just went in and did 80 thousandths on both. We're not going to do anything with breakthrough multipasses. So on our linking parameters, again, it's absolute, 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 and then an incremental value of negative 1.19. And we've already told it the chamfer width that we want, so it's going to take that into account, so it's going to go beyond this number. We definitely want to have line arc filtering on when you get to a contour, contour type toolpath or you will get faceting on arc movements. Um, you get smooth motions, right, by turning this tolerance up to 95. So you'd go here, 95, boom, right? So that toolpath, all I did was I watched where it's actually going to wrap in. And we're going to use the largest portion of the tool here so we can get into the corner as close as possible. And this is a drill mill which has flutes on it. So this is a little bit more than the drill mill's flutes will allow. We got, I think, three quarter of flute. But in a lot of cases, by using a drill mill, you can actually hit these corners without doing damage. You see, we're wrapping in about as close as possible. I could have got a little closer here. And all I did, go back to the right side view, is I went to wireframe, modify length, shorten, 
and I shortened this chain until I saw the lead-in was just barely missing this wall and I did that for both sides both inside and out and that's how I did my deburring on this model um, Mastercam 2025 SimQuest was talking about there's going to be a toolpath called um, three axis deburr so we'll have access to the type of toolpath that you see over here in the five axis category so stay tuned for that and then this is a just a plain old edge break we're gonna be hitting these corners right here so let's watch that run that one's pretty self-explanatory same thing just a straight line deburring path quick and dirty boom and it's going to do all the way around. Again, we could use toolpath transform instead of actually creating geometry and letting these toolpaths do the thing that way. On the entry and exit, you see we've got a nice sweep in here, but we want to start at the center. So one tip when you're on lead in, lead out is it's going to default oftentimes to tangent. Let it go to perpendicular, and I kept those same 80 thousandths lead in, lead outs. And what you'll notice is by using perpendicular, we start at the center and it'll do a nice wrap in. So wait until it's just about there, go back to the right side view, and it'll be a smooth transition for that um, deburring path. Right around there clean and back to center. All right, now what else is cool about the mill turn environment? So one neat thing you can do is you can set up your tools on the machine. I set up these MT Marchetti tools from MD Tooling and let's look here single OD turning main and sub I think that'll work let's put that on tool 1 and then let's grab our standard OD finisher put it on the main spindle and then you can right click here and say view all and it's gonna put it on the turret so if we right click and say graphic view named isometric reverse we get the right orientation press F9 to turn on the origin and you can see we've got the right configuration here it's actually not the block that I meant to use so let me grab a different one here we'll say remove all components and children and let's do a single OD turning main spindle only yeah let's use that one pretty sure that one's already set up so we'll put this on there and then if you notice the tool was sticking out there a mile so what we can do is right click and we'll say on the tool itself I was in the wrong area set projection length and you can drag your models around and determine how far you think you're gonna need to stick out to clear things so let's go nice and tight here rigid press enter to accept now when we view it graphics view named isometric reverse there you go we've got a tool that's properly configured so you got the MT here these tools really liking them so far very cool exit out of here and what's our next one we're gonna use tool one again we're gonna finish alright we're gonna need a boring bar on number four so let's see here we got a quad boring bar holder that one's cool we're not gonna use that one this time let's go with the 1.5 boring bar holder and in that position we're gonna put the Sandvik ID finish let's grab that there go we'll have to set the stick out here but that's a pretty neat tool holder let's keep going down through the list here we're gonna need a um, ER32 let's uh, let's put that in a twin live tool holder and that is tool number eight and in that position we're going to use a half inch Harvey let's continue on here select all of our tool paths we'll say G1 to post and what happens we come into this screen you go into consumer double click here now here's where you can set things up like arc how the comments are gonna look the modes and see output and this is just inside the control definition right 
you can go in and change some output settings. Yeah, these retract strategies are pretty important on a multi-axis machine like this that you're not colliding at with anything. But we'll get out of here. And when we get over here, let's say launch and see if this simulation set itself up correctly. Well, already it looks like we got a problem here. <laughs> Our boring bar is too long, right? But it's pretty cool. If you press play, this thing is going to move and it's going to do everything just like it would when you're running. We do have a part that I set up where the simulation was correct and I pulled out all the bells and whistles basically right and spent the time but on this part it didn't really make sense. You see it doesn't look like my parts even displaying correctly on the chuck but it does tell you which direction the spindles running and when the chucks spinning you can see it turns into a solid here. Speed things up here and you can see some of the stuff running through and you'll get to see some of the live tooling come in here. I do have a actual production part we just ran that I could show you the full simulation but it looks like you get the idea. You see everything working in concert here. Really cool. So I clicked on axis control under view inside the simulation here and now you can jog it around just like you were on any old machine. So we're in Z, right? Let's go to a higher jog rate and we can actually pull this thing around and cause it to crash, right? And you can check clearances this way. You can rotate the turret. So right now we're on Z. Let's go to turret one and you can rotate things this way. You see the collision just happened here. The guys over at SimQuest were showing me this. It's pretty neat. The right spindle will do the same thing. Let's go into right spindle, W, and now we can bring that in and out. We can go to C2, and we can rotate that chuck. Really neat. <laughs> but, yep, when you're inside the views and stuff here, you can turn, if you can't see, you can turn the machine itself off and watch your tools. You can turn the housing off. They've got this all set up. If you guys have any things that you want to see, showcased in Mastercam or on the machines or any machining topic in general, let us know. Thank you.